Good morning, people of St. Paul's. This morning we welcome Mr. Sibelo Mtumkulu, an ordained in our diocese, who's been appointed to our archdeaconry in St. Paul's and now living at St. Paul's. We welcome your message this morning, Sibelo. Thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted in your sight. O oh God, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Have you ever been attempted to keep something that you, do, that you know you might not need? Something that takes up a space you could use for something else? I sometimes do. In fact, I struggle with what to keep and what not to keep as I was packing a few days ago. The 13th chapter of Matthew contains about seven parables. Each begin with the words, The kingdom of heaven is like. And today's gospel reading contains five of these parables. The first part of our gospel reading this morning begins with the famous parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the yeast. Purposefully, the lectionary compilers skip verses 36 to 43. We might remember that they form part of last week's gospel reading. The second part of the gospel contains the last three parables, the parable of the treasure hidden in the field, the parable of the merchant looking for a pearl, and lastly, the parable of the net. This parable contains similar ideas, but they also contain some differences. They all save one purpose. They are meant to present to us the picture of the kingdom of heaven. My sisters and brothers in Christ, allow me to try and look at these five parables with you this morning. The first two parables seem to contain the same idea. The seed and the yeast takes their own time to produce the desired results. The seed takes a time to germinate, to be natured and to grow. It also requires a suitable environment for its growth. Jesus says the mustard plant becomes the biggest plant in the garden, so big in such a way that even the birds find place to patch in into its branches. A small seed produces a big result, a big tree. So does the yeast. It gets mixed with flour and all the other ingredients. And then the dough rises in a warm place for some few hours. I guess the woman Jesus is talking about in this morning gospel will have done the same. The small yeast will be mixed, or as Greek would suggest, it's get hidden, crypto, in the flour. The parable of the treasure also reinforces the idea of the hiddenness of the kingdom of God. The field was just a plain field to those who were walking around or walking past. But to the man that Jesus is talking about this morning, the field is of good value, the value hidden from the side. In the parable, we are not told how the man finds the treasure hidden in the field, but all we know is that he did. The treasure is so important to him in such a way that he, he goes and sells everything he has to buy it. No one else could have done that, except the one who knows the secret. This, the same seems to come out of the parable of the pearl. Like the man in the other parable, the merchant here comes across a valuable pearl. In this case, it looks like, unlike the treasure, the value of the pearl is not hidden. The merchant here also go and sell everything he has to buy this pearl. I suppose the merchant had a lot of valuable things, but he had to get rid of all of them to get this extremely valuable pearl. The kingdom of God is valuable. It challenges us to get rid of the things we might keep for our own benefit, things we might consider good. One is being challenged to sacrifice good things for the better, knowing that they reward with the loss. The parable of the net 
presents to us the same idea as the parable of the wheat and the wheat, which is not included in today's gospel. But as Reverend Gabinde shared with us last week, the wheat gets to be separated from the wheat, and what is needed, the wheat, get kept, while what is not needed, the wheat, get thrown to a place in finance. The same idea is presented to us here this morning. The fisherman catches all kinds of fish, pull the net to the shore and separate what is needed, good fish, from what is not needed, the bad fish. Yes, I do think this could mean separating those who have done well from those who haven't. But I'm also wondering if, we, if not all of us have a bit of a weed in us and a bit of a wheat in us, a bit of a good fish in us and a bit of a bad fish in us. And the challenge to us this morning is not to only challenge those whom we might consider as bad, but to also challenge ourselves. But to also challenge ourselves to get rid of our bad traits and nature of good traits. Yes, it is not easy. I know. Sometimes it's not easy to get rid of our bad behaviors. But as Paul says in our second reading, the Spirit of God helps us in our own weaknesses, and the Spirit intercedes for us in accordance with the will of God. Can I leave you with these three questions to think about this morning? What is it in your possession that you might have to get rid of to save the environment? Or maybe to help those who are in need? Two, what part of our own lives that we would consider as good fish? And what part of our own lives that we would consider as bad fish? Three, what are those small things that we can do to participate in a fight against COVID-19? Or to participate in a fight against gender-based violence? It is through these very small things that we can do that we can get to experience the kingdom of heaven. Amen.